All right, as I was mentioning, or as I mentioned a while ago, uh, putting the hex on there, here's what it looks like from the bottom now. And I said that I uh, assumed one of the reasons of putting that hex on there was to hold it in a vise. Well, guess what the next step we need to do is? That's hold it in a vise. So we'll insert that or set it up in the vise. What we're going to do is lay out our, uh, our hole pattern, and I'll see if I can get this maybe where you can see it. Mark laid out eight holes, nine holes counting the center, and as I said at the beginning of this project, I'm going to hold off on that center hole for now. But Mark had some unusual diameters in their hole sizes, 141 thousandths, 266 thousandths, 109 thousandths. And at first I thought, well, maybe those are just uh, uh, conversions from uh, an original metric drawing. But then I got to looking a little closer, and each one of these are a 64th over a nominal size. The purpose of these holes Again, I'm making a little bit of an assumption here, but uh, I know what I'll use them for, and that's to drive out pins. So you want them a little bit larger than uh, if you were driving out an uh, uh, eighth-inch pin. That would be 128 thousandths, so a 964, 1764, and around the, around the circle on there. Now what we want to do is center our piece up. So on the x-axis, as soon as that kicks out, zero out the x, and I like to be sure that repeats at least within a half a thousandth, and it did within one tenth of a thousandth. So now we'll come to the other side of our piece. And 3.211. All right, that repeated. Now we go X one half and bring our table back or we'll bring the dial back to zero. That's within one tenth. I'm good with that. So we'll lock the table down on the x axis now. Zero out the y. I may have overshot that just a little bit, so again, I'm going to be sure it repeats within a half a thousandth. And it did. So we'll move to the other side. Three point two one nine and Y one half. So bring that back to zero. And there is our uh, direct center of our piece. Now this is only the second time on this DRO that I've actually laid out a bolt hole circle bolt hole pattern, but we're going to try it right quick. The drawing says that uh, these holes, are, uh, this circle of holes is to be 1.875, and this is eight holes equally spaced, a diameter of 1.875. So over here on our DRO, if we hit the uh, bolt hole pattern, and this is, is going to be on the x-y axis, center is zero, we're starting from zero, diameter is 1.875, 1.875, enter, all right, 
Go to our next step. The number of holes is eight holes. Starting angle is at zero. Ending angle is, let's see. It's the only thing I don't like about this DRO. You've got to do that calculation. Uh, 360 divided by 8 is 45 degrees, of course. So 360, 360 minus 45 is our ending angle is 315. So our number one hole says move on the X to 937. Basically what we have to do is move that down to zero. Alright, so we want to zero that out on the DRO now. This first hole, this is to be a 960 force. And I believe I'm going to have to raise my, my head up a little, especially when we get to these larger bits. That is definitely a, a dull drill bit. You speed that small drill up some. We move down to our number two hole. It says X is at, well again, the reading doesn't really matter. What we want to do is bring the DRO back to zero. And this hole is 764s. Come down to hole three. If I get these within a thousand, so I'm I'm plenty happy with. The layout. I wish, I wish the DRO only went to thousands, but it goes to ten thousands. So okay, my truck will not uh, 
tighten down on that. I'm going to have to change chucks. What I'm going to do is go ahead, for the purposes of the video, go ahead and do the rest of them. And before I take anything out, I will get a different chuck in or go through my miscellaneous uh, drill bits over there and see if I can't find uh, one that will work. Let's go on the hole four. And this is 21 64ths. This hole is, let's see, that is 13-64. That is hole F, that's 13 64 And our next hole is G, which is 25 64. This hole is fifteen sixty fourths. And our final hole. All right, our final hole number eight is a 33 64s. That's a little larger, of course, than a half. Uh, and I do not have a drill that size either. Uh, half inch is as large as I've got. So, well, it's the largest one I got in 64. So after that, I go up to a 5 8 in my collection, I'm pretty sure. But what I'm going to do is drill that out. With one being this big, I'm going to drill a pilot hole to begin with, with our last drill bit that we used. See what I think I will slow that down even more.
All right, I don't have a, as I say, I don't, don't have a bit that big, but I do have a, a reamer that's a, just a little over a thousandths. All right, I found a drill bit over there that is in extremely bad shape. I have no idea that it'll work. It's a 9 sixteenths. And the end of it is messed up real bad. Uh, that's a little bigger than what Mark was calling for. But I'm going to try it because uh, the only other thing I've got is a uh, 500 thousandths reamer that is, uh, that is one thousandths over a reamer. All right, I'm going to have to carry this uh, drill bit to the uh, uh, sharpener, sharpen that up some. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and finish that. Then I'll bring the DRO back to this hole, uh, back to hole three. Go back through it and drill that small one. Uh, I'll look through my bits and see if I can find one. Right now, I'm just going to stop the camera until I... Uh, so I can get this bit sharpened a little bit and then I'll come back. All right, I looked through my miscellaneous drill bits and actually found a 764. It's what I was missing on that, uh, uh, on that smallest hole. But I changed the chucks out, which this one, this chuck will hold down, will go as far as 130 seconds. So I drilled that hole out and Mark doesn't call for it on the drawings, uh, any kind of a uh, countersink in that. But I'm going off camera. I'm going to go around, stagger through all the holes and, with a countersink, and just clean that top edge up just a little bit. Uh, the nine sixteenths bit that I was trying to use in this large hole, it was just beyond sharpening. It had a big chunk out of the end of it. So what I did was use a nine sixteenths end mill, and I'll believe believe that will be sufficient. So, but one other thing I wanted to to cover before I uh, before I take it out of the vise, Mark shows in his drawing a quarter inch uh, V through that, a ninety degree V through the center, and I understand fully what that's for, and I may have a need for it at some time. But honestly, just before starting this, I had retrimmed my mill. Uh, first off, I do not have a sign plate uh, that will hold this at a 45 degree angle to cut that through there. I'm thinking the best way to do that would have been, with it sitting right here on the vise, not moved, would have been to tilt the, uh, the head on the mill 45 degrees and cut that in there, lay out the... Uh, the width at the top, which would have been a quarter inch. Uh, I may at some point come back and do that, uh, but right now, as I say, I have just finished getting the, the uh, mill trimmed back in, and I really don't want to move the head right now. And I'm, I'm thinking that I probably won't need, uh, won't need that V uh, that much anyhow. It would have been a good educational tool, I understand that, but when I come back I'll be over at the workbench and we'll look at what we're going to do to finish this project up. Alright, I'm back over here at the workbench now from whence I started, and this is almost completed. Got the eight holes drilled in there, I carried them, uh, went back around through them and did just a, a very minor countersink just to remove that burr off the top up there. Uh, you can see what the bottom side looks like. Look. Mark's plans call for this to be heat treated and two ground surfaces. This surface and this surface to be ground. Uh, I've got an oven but the oven will only get up to about 1200 degrees and that's not enough 
uh, from what I can read, this needs to go up to at least about 1600. Uh, as I said at the beginning of this, I accidentally bought pre-hardened 4140. Now, I don't know whether that means just the surface was hardened. I do know that it was very hard material uh, drilling and boring that out. So, Mark, I hope you'll forgive me that uh, uh, that I don't that I'm not going to heat treat this, and I don't have a surface grinder either. I would love to have one, but I've got to have some more shop space before I get any more equipment. But in lieu of a surface grinder, I guess I'm going to spend about an hour over here with my fancy dancy oil can and do some of this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I've enjoyed making it and enjoyed the little trip down memory lane as well. Have a good day, good week, and I'll see you on the next video.